What's going on beautiful people? I am the Grand Master and I also go by D-Ray bringing you guys the next episode of the Grand Master's Table and again, as always, I am joined by my beautiful co-host. I'm going to say hi. Hi. With that, is that <laughs> the decibel level is like incredibly low today. <laughs> but we're, gonna, we're gonna rewind, push play, today. and go. Sorry, hi, <laughs> <laughs> guys. We have a very like special it. episode today for those who are fanatics. If you guys are followers of the Draft League community, today we have a Titan. Today we're bringing in Shuckle King, who is the champion of not only the APA Academy. The Eon World Trophy, who is that is owned and commissioned by Automatic, who is the main person behind the Draft League website, so big deal, as well as the TBL. Um, I believe it was the debut season, or if not the second season, and his co-captain was Six Foot Hack, so that was a big deal as well. My man has come into Generation 8 and has not lost a Draft League. That is impressive. Please welcome Shuckle King. Oh, I haven't lost as far as you're aware. <laughs> I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> but how's it going, everyone? I'm glad glad to be on here. <laughs> <laughs> guys, if you guys are excited for this episode of the Grandmaster's Table, do me a massive favor and shadow claw that thumbs up button. I don't know why I did the snugglers. Shadow <laughs> intro. <laughs> This uh -oh. is a Snuggler's video, apparently. Oh, no. Wow, I don't even know. I'm even Schmitten. He's got me over here fangirling. Guys, hit the like button if you guys are ready for this episode. And also, if you're new, please do me a massive favor and hit the subscribe button. Turn on post notifications, hit the bell button so you guys get notified every single time we post a new video. Now, now that we put Mimikyu back on the back burner and we're not in Ooh, the Snuggler's tight. category. Um, how you doing, man? How are things going? Oh, things are going great. Have you, uh, have you had... It's a beer called Medalla. It's from Puerto Rico. Uh, Modelo. Is it Modelo? It's not Modelo. No, it's called Medalla. It's like a. It's a gold. Has like a gold, uh, like paper film on the outside of it. It's like it's apparently the Bud Light of Puerto Rico, according to my roommate. But it, it's not that bad. I get. That I, sounds I absolutely phenomenal. Is that like a Bevmo thing you could pick up? A what? Yeah, <laughs> not people don't know about Bevmo, <laughs> Daniel. My heart just fell Italian, into my stomach. So. <laughs> it's just a liquor. Like oh, a, man. A Bevmo liquor stands for more for beverage more, beverage and more. It's a store that's apparently maybe just out here in the West Coast. I, could, I have I could no idea. It it's like oh, yeah. a department uh, store of alcohol. A department store of alcohol is the best way to That sounds pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we've yeah. got kind of stuff like that in New Jersey and Delaware, but Pennsylvania, it's all uh, it's actually all run by the state of Pennsylvania. All the, all oh. the alcohol stuff, so it's oh, really weird. Dang, yeah. And like some the, places you can't buy alcohol on Sundays. That um, was the, I've heard of that. That was exactly what I was going to ask. Is there, so you're in Pennsylvania? Yes. Yeah, I am uh, right outside Philadelphia with uh, my, oh. my former uh, my former team name, Philadelphia Absols. It's based on the uh, the Philadelphia Soul Arena Football League team that's currently not there anymore. Because I think Arena Football is. I think it got discontinued a year or two ago. Huh. Very unfortunate. I actually didn't know that. It was owned I feel by, like uh, the Absol logo is like. It's like when you see the Absol logo, you just think of Shuckle King. <laughs> It was something that you, it's just you stapled it for so long everywhere that I just, it's something that you kind of just resonate with. I know that you just recently created a new franchise, which is the um, OK Rilla Boomers, right? Oh, of course. You got to base it off the uh, OK Boomer meme. That's, if you're using the OK yeah, Boomer meme, yeah, yeah. you're basically a boomer at this point, which is pretty appropriate for me. So <laughs> I appreciate it even more. <laughs> Philadelphia, is it? What's the weather like right now? I know that people probably tell you that all the time, but I'm curious. Where do we in? What's the month are we in? August? I guess. Is it like no, it's July? Disgusting hot. It's a lie. Uh, it's well. I mean, right now it's it's pretty dark out, so it's like actually cooler than I thought. It's probably like mid 60s right now. Oh, okay. But like not. during the day, probably gets to like low 80s to high 80s Fahrenheit. Um, oh, it can get up to like mid 90s. It can get low yeah. as like mid 70s it, it like kind of 105 this week so 105 <laughs> holy crap yeah, yeah. yeah dude sucks. good old san diego <laughs> mother nature is on some kind of like pms in san diego where you'd think that you know yeah. on the postcards it said sunshine all the time but people yeah. don't understand that the sunshine comes with either really really cold winds 
or mm-hmm. scorching hot air yeah. that you just can't <laughs> breathe in, and you never know which one you're going to get, yeah. dependent. But the sun's still shining, so I mean that's that's the common denominator. <laughs> yeah, I love the whole I, thing. San Diego was like pretty temperate; like there wasn't a whole lot of temperature change. Oh no, is that not the case? No, <laughs> maybe I'm sure you guys the- wait for that. By the beach, but in, we're more inland, and in okay. inland, it gets into, like, uh, definitely, like, this whole week, we're in the hundreds. Wow, that sucks, but I do <laughs> yeah. love the, uh, I do love the San Diego Zoo. That's definitely my favorite. Oh, Ooh. we live there. We Dude, live there yeah, because our, our kids are obsessed with the, with animals in general, so the zoo is, like, we're literally there every single weekend. Oh, that's awesome. What's their favorite yeah. exhibit? Um, I think our son, the gorillas, and then Yeah, I was gonna say the gorillas orangutans. that was a big exhibit that I remember. Yes, it's a that's actually my favorite too. And then they also really love the polar bears. Yeah. Okay. Um what is Arya like? Well, she's Arya a. Likes she, it all. My daughter is a. My daughter loves pandas, and unfortunately, when she became you know coherent of what, what she was watching, <laughs> they, they they shipped their pandas back, back to, to China because China, China, so China sent them a letter <laughs> and said, "Hey, uh, it's time to come home." And yeah. then So she kind of got the <laughs> of short course. end of the stick. And she freaking loves pandas too. Oh, that's so sad. Well, yeah, that was the worst personal. timing. Yeah, they they love. She loves it all, though. She does. She, she loves it all. Were those parents? Were those people at the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Safari Park? Yes. Where we've been there so often, and to the point where we look knowledgeable. On well, we're, not necessarily we're knowledgeable, but we're just kind of looking at other stuff versus the animals. So we're actually people watching at times, and we'll notice people completely like lost. Lost, yeah. They're like, I don't know where we're going. <laughs> yeah. It's this way, and I have the need for whatever reason to just be like, Hard bro, where do you need to go? I got you. Just, yeah, we I'm know a, I'm it. a navigate. You need to get to the gorillas? Go this way. You need to go to the to the to the dark sharks with the penguins? Go this way. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> we're experts at this point. <laughs> you guys have anything like that tourist wise over in philly obviously oh, yeah, there me. is a philadelphia zoo which is it's pretty legit yeah i like it a lot and uh, a friend of mine interned there so she had a uh free passes so i was able to go there pretty consistently a couple of years ago I haven't gone there recently but no it's really nice and my, my favorite animal is the okapi you guys know what that is oh, i'm yeah. assuming you guys know yeah we do we have some in the um in the safari park yeah yes uh-huh, the copy. Yeah, is that no, the so one that's like that's a mix the between the zebra, the, the zebra, the zebra legs booty. and the, uh, the giraffe of oh, the yeah, world? The zebra booty. <laughs> yeah, zebra yeah, booty uh, is what we call yeah, it. Uh, I think they're, they're closely related to the giraffe. So it's, Yes. They got yes. the big tongues. They like to stay pretty isolated. Uh, yep. So yeah, no, it's, I, I love the copies and Philly has a good exhibit for it. Uh, my hometown also has a really nice zoo that's all uh, donation suggested. So it's free uh-huh. to get in. Which is really oh, nice. Oh, wow, that's awesome! For a, for a pretty small town, it has a pretty big zoo there, which is nice. But COVID obviously hit that pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where's your hometown? Uh, it's K May, New Jersey. Uh, it might be a town that actually people know of. Uh, it's actually, I think, the second or third. I think it's the third most popular place that people want to get married. Oh, number one. Interesting. I think number one is. Uh, Las Vegas and number two is Disney World. It's between oh. one of those two or one of two. I don't care. But third is Kate May. And like Kate oh. May is like it was voted like top ten beach of the world uh by some oh. magazine a year or two ago and like we took full advantage of it as our town. But no it's 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 an awesome place down there. A lot of really cool architecture too. A lot of like a uh, Victorian style like like uh. what you get at uh San Francisco. Uh. Has that rubbed off on you, ladies' man? Do you have any uh, significant other in your life? Maybe the romance uh, rubbed off on your daily life? No, I have it in a couple of years since uh, since in college. But yeah, we'll, oh. we'll see. So ladies, if you're interested in dating a champion, a um, champion. we have oh, full yeah. access to this one in the Pokemon and Draft League community. Make sure oh, you yeah. uh, swipe right. We'll put that down He's in the description. Like, yes. <laughs> I'll remember yes. Yes. Give me all of them. <laughs> That's amazing. So dipping into your YouTube career, my man. So I know obviously you're very talented in what you do. How long have you been doing content? How long have you been doing content on, on YouTube? Oh, I have a really long time ago. I remember like just for the lulls when I was like 
when I was playing, when I was like big in Pokemon Smogon and Generation Five, I remember I posted a couple battles there. So one of that would have been like seven, eight years ago at least, and they they were just crappy videos of just playing uh, Showdown Lives and such with with no editing whatsoever. But now I've been uploading probably for the last two years, at least somewhat consistently with at least some somewhat quality and somewhat care about what I would you say that your YouTube uh, your YouTube background your YouTube career is because of you uploading draft leagues that are quote unquote uh, upload required or is there something that you're like oh man I want to do YouTube it's something that I'm passionate about yeah let me look at my channel and I can answer that question for you <laughs> <laughs> no it was okay wow so it was a lot of it looks like a lot of draft tournaments, but no. Okay. Oh wow, this is this is bringing back a lot of memories here. You're looking for my channel. <laughs> that is that's crazy. Yeah, looks like it was a lot of uh, just tournaments. So like the draft league community will have uh, tournaments that usually involve you draft, and then you have a, a bracket tournament or like a pool tournament. So like the top two advance from each pool. And then it's like a March Madness type style tournament where it's single elimination. So it looks like I posted a lot of tournaments. And for the most part, I did pretty well in all the tournaments I was in. Uh, I probably <laughs> uploaded ones that I did better in than others. But um, for the most part, I do pretty okay at this game. Uh, but <laughs> back in a okay <laughs> long time ago, like three, four years ago, Showdown leagues were a thing that were upload required i don't think that's really a thing yeah. anymore just because Not so much yeah i the, the draft league community i feel like was bigger in gen 7 than it is in gen 8 maybe but yeah nobody likes to look at showdown uh yeah i think that's like, the difference yeah. is that nowadays the game is so pretty yeah. that exactly. i think that it's yeah. just a thing to do when you upload a wi-fi league but the deterrent of that which is kind of the um the unfortunate negative to the actual meta or the competitiveness of draft league is that sometimes it could deter maybe some of the better draft league players that don't necessarily want to commit to you know getting themselves a switch grabbing themselves a capture card it's all so that extra percent. stuff it's so yeah so we're missing out on a bunch of draft league players that may not have the clout name but are incredibly talented at the game but just don't want to do it because you know it's not important to them to go out and get a switch and get out yeah, all this expensive part. fancy equipment yeah yeah it's expensive stuff and like generation seven when it was on the ds i feel like the uh, the barrier of entry was like pretty close to impossible unless you wanted to spend like multiple hundreds of dollars and it was yep. something i know i definitely wanted to consider back then but it was just too much money for it to be worth my time and now now i feel like it's a little bit more accessible and i feel like there are more uh wi-fi leagues out there than there were before uh it is cheaper to get a capture card for the uh, switch than it was for the uh, 3ds so that's yeah, really the, the whole ripping apart your basically uh, physical yeah. physical physical attributes of your 3ds instead of just buying something that plugs into plugs a usb into port it. into an hdmi cable yeah. is much easier to do nowadays just like how you said so you know and that light's a little bit easier but like you said the game is prettier so it's nicer to have a wi-fi league in that in that sense but now showdown leagues you do do a bunch right do you um, participate in more showdown leagues than you do wi-fi uh that's honestly tough it's uh I'm not in. I'm not really in many leagues at this point. Um, I'm trying to step away a little bit from doing because I was in. I was in three Wi-Fi leagues at one time, which was insane. So I didn't really do any showdown leagues at that point. But ideally, in the future, I would do like one or two total between Wi-Fi and showdown. Maybe like one Wi-Fi, one showdown uh, would be a pretty good balance for me going forward. So I don't want to get burnt out. Yeah, playing, that's, that's I love for it. Sure. I've been doing it for, I've been doing it since uh, Gen Six when Draft League was all on Skype. I don't know, were you <laughs> around back in the days of Skype no, Draft she... Leagues? I wasn't, man. I actually, so this is my first. I actually didn't start Draft League until August of last year. That's when yeah, I first started. Um, oh, I was, that's crazy. I'm a doubles player. Mm -hmm. I'm a VGC guy. It doesn't. There's not very much difference in regards to play, but. 
the main difference you can basically attribute to is just um, move sets. There's moves that are under shadows that you don't use in draft that you would use in doubles. Maybe specific oh, strategies, but more so but the Pokemon. There's a lot of Pokemon that don't get used in the, yeah. in the singles draft league that there would be in doubles. But it, it's not necessarily the biggest, you know, translation to like a like a like a like a culture shock, you yeah. can say. But it is, okay. is a little bit different. But I started in August. That's when I that's when I got going. So to me, I think that the three draft leagues is, is manageable but I do feel what you're saying I'm like oh man this is yeah. this could be this before, could be tough before he's like I'm only gonna do one or two this like this and season. I just got <laughs> and then he's sucked like in. he did two and then he's like oh I'm getting invited to another one I said I, what happened to just doing two he's like well I guess yeah. I can just do one more <laughs> man I have a hard time saying no I don't know if you yeah. feel that sometimes that <laughs> I just I had commitments to do like one league we'll say and then a commissioner will come to me and they'll be like hey you want to participate in this league and it's obviously a great opportunity so you're like well i mean i didn't think i was gonna do it but sure and then a week later (laughs) that you had nothing on your radar and then all of a sudden another one comes in you're like oh man i can't say no so all of a sudden you're you're just warped into draft league and everything kind of revolves around it which in turn what you said exactly what you said is that you can get pretty burnt out it takes up a lot of your time it really does even just one takes up a it can take up a lot of time so doing oh, three definitely. can't even imagine <laughs> yeah, so what it, i want to get oh what yeah go saying? for it oh yeah go for it <laughs> what i want to kind of kind of segueing into your whole you know we'll say it the skill level that you possess within the draft league community <laughs> but man you may not want to admit it but you're a monster what you do you do a really good job it's uh it's always real tough to play against Chuckle King. And, uh, <laughs> Daniel just had a flashback of all the times he got beat. For those who don't know, so Chuckle and I participated in the AP Academy. And uh, Homeboy had the scariest team I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't heard about you. And I just basically from what my friends would say about you, is like, oh man, this guy's really, really good. Bring your A game, spend some time on your dr- on your on your team. But then I look at the matchup and I'm like, why don't we give him this stuff then if he's this good? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, you obviously had a pretty busted team in the AP Academy. Do you attribute the the repeated leagues that you've been in over the past six years to your skill level, or has it always kind of come naturally to you? Oh, so what what do you mean exactly by that? So would you say that you picked up draft league and the actual game itself pretty quick, or was it more of a, a development like process? Like a learning process. Mm-hmm. So well, I've been I've been playing this game for a really long time. As I said before, probably I started in 2012 is when when I started playing competitive Pokemon, and I was in uh, black and white NU was the tier that I I fell into, which eventually became black and white too. And you and I remember by the end of it, there was like a big final tournament, like before (laughs) heading off to Gen Six, and like we just ranked like the top players in like a single elimination tournament. And I was ranked like two or three of the whole like and you community going into it. So like I just felt like I picked up the game pretty quickly, and that that I was back when uh, Pokemon Online was a thing. This point I started playing and like going trying to go to top of the ladder on a Pokemon online. So I've been doing it a really long time and I like to try like a bunch of weird and creative sets. And that was attributed by playing NU, which is if you guys aren't aware, there's there's an there's an Ubers tier, which is like your top like Mew, like Mew and Mewtwo, Lugia, like all those really powerful moms are on the top, and then you have really really good mons like garchomp was like among the best mons and ou and then there's lower lower tiers of mons that wouldn't get used in the higher tiers just because they're not that viable but like in black and white and you you had like sock alamomola manda buzz that were like among the best mons which would never get any use in ou uh so i feel like having that experience of playing with mods that people didn't want to use gave me a higher advantage in playing in draft league because I already had to play creatively playing with Pokemon people didn't want to use. Uh, so I was accustomed to it pretty quickly, like my very, very first league that I eventually quit because like the, the owner was making up rules as we were going along. I think oh. I, I was six and one. 
Uh, so like I really didn't have <laughs> much of a learning curve going in. And I think it was attributed to just playing a lot of showdown and getting accustomed to like the Smogon format and transitioning into draft league. Uh, that would make a lot of sense because it allows you to use Pokemon that aren't necessarily used often because that's basically what draft league is, right? Us having to fill a specific criteria of tiers that involves yeah. higher tier and lower tier Pokemon. And if you're not used to using using those the lower, lower tier Pokemon, then it gives you more of an advantage moving into a meta that has basically the whole thing and understanding how to use them. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. I definitely understand what you're saying. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. That makes a lot of sense. Now, <laughs> when you say you got this is your start for competitive Pokemon, right? How long have you been a fan of the actual franchise? When did you see Pokemon and were like, man, this is pretty dope? Oh, probably when I was about five or six years old is when I played a, on the Game Boy. I played red. Yeah, I played all three, red, blue, and yellow. Obviously, we didn't have green in the States, but mm -hmm. I would play and I'd play with myself, Louie, Casey, Tommy, all like up until like Ray to first, second, third grade. <laughs> we would be playing all these games. I would go over to to Louie and Casey's house to play uh, Pokemon Stadium on the uh, Nintendo oh, man. Or, <laughs> Stadium. Uh, so I, I just love the games at that point. And honestly, I don't remember what caught my attention. It honestly might have been from McDonald's and Burger King. Like you would get like a promotional Pokemon card or something in the in that in the happy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah like, <laughs> that was the hook. Now I never really played the. Uh, the the card game uh besides the uh the, i think it came out on the game boy advanced the pokemon oh the trading card game, game actual video trading game? Card game yeah the mm -hmm. video game of the card game that was a lot of fun i remember putting a lot of hours into that game <laughs> so and you're a cantonian you're from the very very beginning oh yes definitely i'm definitely a boomer <laughs> I love when you say that. It's funny because the, the the deeper we get into the podcast and the more people we bring into the community, yeah. the ones that are pretty well known have been around since Kanto. So you guys have been fans from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, back in the days when you had to throw the batteries in the Game Boy and the batteries run out, you had to go buy new ones. So you know the gold oh, yeah. struggle days. I had to play in the uh, like the the night late that I had because I like when I had it originally, I didn't have a uh, a light. Yeah, play. like it was a it was a just a dark ish green. Nope. So if you were playing in a like a well lit room, like you couldn't. Yeah, see you can see anything. If you remember that. <laughs> Eventually, they came out. Well, they came out with the the DS light, which yes. was because there was a light that was on it. But they also came with like a a separate attached light that was like from the Game Boy Company that you could put on your Game Boy, and it was throwing it back right now. <laughs> with this. Oh, I so far back. <laughs> I have I remember all, that. <laughs> all the books that uh, that accompanied the game if I was stuck on something. Oh, same. Oh, Daniel Dude, did too. So, that's can, that's oh. the only book he ever read in his oh. entire life. It's was funny that because Pokemon whenever, book. whenever your teachers would say, "Hey, you need to read a book," and I bust out my manual because it was from <laughs> I had Pokemon Yellow, so I had the I had the guidebook for Yellow, and then I got the guidebook for Gold because I had Pokemon Gold after that when Gen Two came out, and I'd uh -huh. bust them on my table uh, at school, and be like, "Boom, I read." So <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was. I would I would be so frustrated because I had the yellow version, right? And then Pikachu gets to Brock and you can't obviously do any damage yeah. to Geodude and Onyx. And so I was probably stuck on that for about two, three months. Rage quitting the game, <laughs> throwing quitting. the game across the room. Nine-year-old Daniel Rage yeah. quitting. And then my mom was like, hey, is this for your game? And so she, she bought it for me. It was at the Barnes & Noble bookstore. And uh, I've had a, probably a guide ever since only ever book? since then. Yeah. yeah, the only book <laughs> the only I would read, book I would get one guide for each game that I got. Because if I didn't have it, then I can't, you know, obviously get through. Because I would just get... Be you running in circles so and pissed. circles, and I get so upset. Yeah. I'm one of those rage quitters. I just I can't <laughs> handle it, man. I have to have something to guide. So, for those teachers that if you guys just happen to stumble upon the podcast, okay. I do, I do read, I do read Pokemon hey, guidebooks. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I remember getting my book from the Scholastic book. It was like a the book school? fairs. Book the fairs. book fairs. Oh, yeah, they those were the freaking like week. best. Oh, uh, yeah. it was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's where I remember getting a couple of my books from.
Those are lit. The Scholastic yeah, ones always had so like lit. Pokemon, Digimon, those. like actually the good ones that like the teachers sent you there. Oh, I was like these. halfway through the class to actually get you like a real book to read. Yeah. But you come back with like a guide for something that is I like never got any books. I always got those random pens or random little. Oh my god. <laughs> like the little extra stuff that yeah. aren't books there. Oh my god, so much. <laughs> that's not what that book's in the Scholastic oh, I book. I, I actually had like to read back in the day. Yeah, Man. I had the uh, accelerated reader was a thing. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, it was a thing. I remember. I was not oh, in that. Finished in second place to Maggie. It, it still haunts me to this day. I have it <laughs> in my room, and like the arm broke off. Like for the second, it was like a like the, there were two arms raced out for the trophy, and like one of the arms broke off as soon as I got it. So oh, it, was, no. it was just no good for second place. <laughs> no, I never did beat Maggie, but we're still good friends, so it's all good. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so now that we've established that you came in during the Kanto days, we have a, a wide variety of Pokemon to choose from. So I'm really excited to get this one from you. If you were to say, what, um, if we were to tell you, you can only choose one Pokemon to be your absolute favorite of all time. What you think it'd be? Well, I mean, it has to be Shuckle. I mean, that's that's the basis of my name, but. <laughs> That is awesome because that was gonna be what I was gonna ask you next. Now I, I need to get the I need to get the dirty deeds out for this. So Summer doesn't know this. Um, Shuckle here. I'll pull this picture off for you, but while we talk about it, so his name is obviously Sh Shuckle King, yes. right? Shuckle's a little turtle that came in Generation Sounds Two, like um, either a red shell or a blue shell. Yeah. Shout oh, out to Nintendo. I know this one. Okay, I know. Okay, this one. it's a you know derpy, right? But amazing, amazing bulk. We'll, we'll, we'll gas it up, you know. Um, how did that How did that become your favorite? <laughs> I guess it was, I think it was all of thinking of a username to get on the, the Smogod back in the day. And I was like, uh, I mean, I guess I got to think of a Pokemon and then put some numbers after the day because that's how usernames were. And now if you put a, like put random numbers after your name, it's pretty lame, but it's whatever. Uh, so I think, I believe Shuckle did, I think it still does have two of the highest bait stats in the game. Isn't that uh, incredible? That's crazy. 230 defense. Yeah, I don't think there's any Pokemon that has higher. Maybe Mega Steelix at this point. Uh, no. That's a freaking Mega Steelix, Jesus. Yeah, I'm not sure. Definitely highest Bidef. Uh, but yeah, so I was like, oh, last the two highest stats, it has to be pretty good. So I wanted to <laughs> And it's a pretty derpy looking Pokemon. So it's like, I could be the king of them pretty easily. <laughs> my lucky number is 87 Jeez. so that's how the that username came wild. up oh there you go so that's actually oh wow okay so that's the thing too that's crazy okay so that makes sense shuckle so there's the prowess there's the origin of the name that's cool i would have i would have never guessed that i thought it was just more of something to make it uh rhyme something like shuckle king just to make it flow make it sound oh, real nice you know yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Get the last part out. Yeah, he's that. He's like, yeah. Everything option you said, B, option B. wash it out. Wash it out. That's cool. So, no disrespect to the Shuckles. This is the the best Pokemon in the game. You know, don't. That's a, there's I'm a, there's impressed a saying, by its defense, though. Yeah, there's. there's yeah, I mean, how, we, got, uh, we do have five on the HP, that. but I'm just saying. But it's a. It's a <laughs> EWT season one. I had Shuckle on my team. I had three rock types, which I like to drop triple typings and stuff. But yeah, I didn't bring Shuckle all season until the uh, championship game where I faced uh, Automatic. <laughs> and I remember watching his, uh, I watched his side of the battle and he saw that I had Shuckle <laughs> and his face just dropped. He's like, yeah, <laughs> not Shuckle to finals. <laughs> and then I pursued, <laughs> I got a sticky web up and then swept with Manaphy. <laughs> so. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, Shuckle. <laughs> Shuckle can be a pretty good man. Hey, this this is a good Pokemon. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out John Jr. He had a birthday stream for his birthday and he's uh playing guys on Wi Fi. It's probably on his channel right now, but he's yeah. like, Hey, let's do one more battle and I say, Hey, throw me in there and I, I brought a like a full offensive setup ice team with Shuckle sticky web. So <laughs> he, he saw the Shuckle, he goes, Oh no. We can probably <laughs> rewind it and listen to his voice. Yeah, where he, he did. sees he's the Shuckle, he goes, Oh no, no. no there's a Shuckle I lose. <laughs> it's the fear that you strike amongst players, so that's for sure. That's that's really cool. Shuckle King is a fan of Shuckle. I love that. Everything has come full circle for me, and now I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. So, my man, uh, do you do any? What's your? 
obviously this is a hobby for you, right? Doing drafting, yeah. doing YouTube content. What is it that you do outside of making content? Oh, the boy. day job wise, what do you do for a living? Oh, for a day job. Okay. So I have my master's in chemical engineering. I Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, hold up. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I feel dumb now. <laughs> damn. I was like waiting for like a normal day job. And he's like, nah. I like uh, 150 IQ. <laughs> 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 so dumb now. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Uh, do you obviously use that for anything right now or anything coming to the works? I mean, I hope I do, but like, co actually, COVID's been putting in my job. Actually, yeah. COVID, COVID's keeping my job fairly busy. Like, it's just been a lot the last two weeks with just how the business is. But I work in uh, pharmaceuticals. So oh, yeah. Actually, it's a, it's a pretty convenient field to be in at this yeah. point with, with a global pandemic happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but actually the week I, I got a new job three months ago and I found out like a week after I left the old job that they were starting in the COVID vaccine and I was working in the vaccine department. So oh. I was like, yeah, that was cool to like actually have like maybe have done like a big difference. Not that I don't do anything or like don't do any work that doesn't make a big difference in people's lives, obviously. But yeah, yeah, man, that's no, huge. yeah COVID pretty big yeah. thing happening on right now. So. So is that so the chemical engineer? Are you in the lab actually developing and I'll say cooking up <laughs> new stuff? Is that for let's just say that if you were to be if you were to see a pharmacist, this is just for my pure curiosity. If you mm -hmm. were to so let's just say that your job is to come in and actually put the medicine together in a in a in yeah a, a chef style of way. <laughs> chef style. Okay, that's not that's not a. It's not a <laughs> fair representation of it. I mean, honestly, what my job is, is basically like, it's a very, very high scale and not revealing anything about specifics. Like it's basically yeah. mixing, of course, of course. Things, yeah. mixing two things together and you get your final product. And then I give it to another group who mixes that with a bunch of other things that I made separately puts them together and then that's the vaccine it's that's incredible if that's you look so cool. at it in a very macro sense it's really not that complicated of work obviously like so i'm in the downstream department uh so there's upstream which is like dealing with more of the chemistry behind oh. it um and then as a chemical engineering it's basically mixing stuff together oh okay that's, cool that's so cool i'm a mixologist <laughs> Yeah, like mixology. a like a. Uh, so yeah, I, I do bartending. So I'm the bartender. <laughs> no, I don't. Actually, uh, I'm a beer guy. That's funny. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. That's that, that's kudos to you. That's mad respect because to do something like that, like you said, even though you may think that it's not you know too complicated, but at the end of the day, it's incredible what you do, and then your job end result, it's helping out a lot of people. So we yeah. appreciate you, man. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's very satisfying to like know that the stuff I'm doing helps other people. And mm -hmm. there's some people that get like a bad rap for like the yeah. farm industry just because there's there's a lot of money that people are putting into it. But, yeah, but, of course. That's like most things, right? There's always a positive and negative to everything. Yeah, there's always it just depends on yeah. how you look at it. And uh, yeah. the way we chose to look at it is that you're, you're doing great, man. There's just a lot of people rely on this kind of stuff, you know, to live their life as normally as they possibly can. And without people like you, then we wouldn't be, you know, at the point we are today. So we yeah. appreciate you, bro. Yep, yeah, for sure. So now uh, moving on into Twitter, because guys, if you guys aren't aware, whenever um, we have a new guest, <laughs> oh, he's already. <laughs> whenever we have a new guest on the Grandmasters table, we like to announce them on Twitter. So that way you guys have the opportunity to get to know them just a little bit better. And so you can shoot your shot, give them any questions that you've always been curious about to get to know about them for. And uh, today was no different. So make sure you follow me at Grandmaster D Ray plug. So that way you guys get more information on the next guest that comes on for that episode on that week. So today we posted out our tweet and uh, you got a big result. Huge, oh, yeah. huge, uh, huge no. audience came in. Um, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new people that are ready to. A lot you know, of multiple questions. A lot of multiple questions. Yeah. So, guys, um, um, for the sake see. of time, we're going to go ahead and pull a couple of them that are not going to be questions that have not already been answered. So, if we don't 
get your question that's probably the reason why but for the most part we'll get through everybody so shout out to you guys for leaving some questions the first question that i see here is from our good friend at john jr 306 oh, no. <laughs> great john asks he asks you uh favorite league match you remember favorite mon in the format and then as a side thing at the end he says also you should tell the story of how we first met versus now so first part what's your favorite league match you remember my favorite league match okay so it was for apa ascension so apa ascension's like there's a different uh so it, the apa has a bunch of showdown and wi-fi leagues uh -huh. um they have a bunch of showdown leagues especially if they have uh beginner leagues so like if you've never done a, a showdown league uh, i definitely recommend checking out the apa or if you are more experienced check out the apa and they have a bunch of formats from like beginners to intermediates to uh people have been doing it for a long time so definitely check them out uh, you can check them out on Twitter or on Discord. But mm -hmm. yeah, I was in Ascension, which is the second highest level, just because it was my first time doing the format. And it was finals. I think my three playoff matches were against like the three people that I knew. I knew were like the three best coaches in the league. And the finals was against Jacko. I don't know if you know Jacko. Sounds familiar. I think it uh, does sound he's, familiar. He's a, a showdown player. I. Uh huh definitely regard him maybe in the top 10 of the, oh, wow. the showdown league so it's so a very good player um and my team going into the season it was a 24 man league which is very large compared to yeah the, yeah that's really it's usually the most uh but we went with 24 so it's crazy and i remember going into the season my team was ranked 23rd in the power rankings so people didn't like my team at all going into it, but I knew so I was must have been that much more satisfying. <laughs> oh, to make it the finals. Yeah, I think I think Jack and I were actually tied for like their same record and same differential going into it. Um, and oh, I had speed pass with Scolipede. So it's a oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, move that you could uh, boot, uh, send different stat boosts to Pokemon that normally wouldn't get them. Uh, so I think it's definitely an unbalanced Busted. Uh, formula. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's go sure. ahead and give a really slow Pokemon that's slow for a reason. And then let's just give us a speed boost and make it faster than the rest of the team and just completely squash. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. man. Oh. Yeah, I guess people thought it was weird that I had like Scolipede plus Scizor plus Mega Heracross. So that's, that, that's again, a triple <laughs> triple type combination. So that's Daniel's face, much. right? <laughs> they let you have speed pass with Mega Heracross? Who allowed this? Is this Panther? I need to get Panther on the phone. Yeah, yeah you could definitely flame Panther for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's incredible. Uh, the uh, second part he asks here is, what's your favorite Mon in League for? Oh, well, no, I got to talk about this battle. So. <laughs> oh, yes, please do. Oh, no, so I was playing Jacko. I had... I did... I. No, I did bring Steed Pass, but I didn't win. I didn't pass speed at anything throughout that game. But I remember I was in great position to win the game with a Dragonite. I just had to click Dragon Dance, and I, like, killed everything. And he froze me with an Ice Beam with Slowbro as I went for Dragon Dance. And then he killed me, and I was in a super, super far back foot. Like, because I was going to either win the game or kill a lot of Pokemon in the process. Yeah. So I had to make, like, I made, like... 10 or 12 switches close to switches in a row or correct plays like consecutively like i predicted that he was going to go to this mon i predicted he wasn't going to switch out and kill this mon with a move and i was able to win that game with like a two pokemon disadvantage it was against one of the like best players out there to my opinion so that was definitely a super memorable game because i was just he so just far super back saying and 10 billion that. iq on him and to basically <laughs> yeah. turn it back around that's crazy <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. But uh, the next question is how I met John Jr. or how I know him. Favorite or, Mon in the league format before we get to that one. What's your favorite? Oh, but that's like, that's actually a really format. good question. Huh. Well, I think I think you know my answer is for Generation 8. And I think it's a lot of people's favorite Pokemon. Mm -hmm. But Dragapult is just... Oh, yeah. I don't know why we did that, so, man. Yeah. <laughs> and like, we there, were, there, there, there were people. I'm not going to... Spoil some names out there, uh, 
but people are saying that Dragapult was overrated. It's not a top three. Oh, oh, who said that? <laughs> I'm not going to call out a live, but. <laughs> but I remember for TBL, uh, Harris, I could blame Harris too. It's a. Yeah, we, there's a there's three of us that are really tight, which is me, Six Foot Hacks, and Harris. You probably don't know Harris. He's a little bit on the on the quieter side compared to me and Leo, but we talk like all the time. And he was saying, ah, oh, maybe get Haxorus. And Leo was like, ah, oh, I guess we should get Haxorus or T-Bell. I was like, no, I'm not going to throw this. We're going to get Dragapult. And we did pretty well with it. So Dragapult yes. is definitely my favorite Mon to use. Uh, my favorite Mon in relation to like the tiered out of Din though, it's definitely Archeops. And I get it almost any opportunity I do. Do you know what, what Archeops is, Summer? It's no, a, I have Archeops is a, here I'll show you. You'll probably be like, ew, it's gross, it's gross. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> it's yeah. a fossil Pokemon. I guess you it, looks, it looks super ugly. Boom. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It's like it's okay. a, uh, like a, like a totem Pokemon, kind of like yeah. that, that type of vibe. Um, but it has an ability. Well, it's, it has super strong attacks, but and it's okay. pretty fast. Oh, yeah. But the downside is it has an ability where if, if it's below fifty percent of its health, its attack is cut in half. So it becomes super weak if it gets below half health. Yeah. Um, so most leagues had it in like tier five, which is like the lowest tier or like a very low point value. Mm. And my thought process was, well, as long as I keep it above half health, it's like a great mod. And if I don't have it above half health, then I'm probably okay with it letting it die. Yeah. <laughs> or faint, because Pokemon don't die. So, yeah, they faint. <laughs> uh, or, and it also has Roost, which is uh, allow you to recover half your HP. So there are <laughs> yeah. ways stay above the defeatist range. So I was pretty comfortable with Archeops being above 50% health. And especially with uh, Generation 7 with Z-Moves, uh, you could use Z-Fly. And Z-Fly was probably the best. Either yeah. Z-Dragon were probably the two best like offensive typings to use your Z-Moves on. Um, it was nice with Fly because you have like Tornadoes or Hurricane, so you don't have to risk missing a move. Um, and there's not a lot of resist to flying out there. It's like Steel, Rock, Electric. I think that's it. So flying is that's generally a decent type. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, Archeops, definitely my favorite mod. Like in that type of sense, something a little underrated. And now we need to know, we need to know the juicy ones. <laughs> uh, we need you to tell the story of how you guys met and then how you guys stand now with Mr. John Jr. John, JJ. I call him JJ. I don't know how many people do. Uh, yeah, I think it was from his YouTube channel. And like, he had, he had some pretty juiced opinions back in his day. <laughs> he always has, he yeah, still he does. Says, yeah. He still does, but he has reasons to back him up. <laughs> he has reasons to back him up. He does not, he says Mantine is a bad Pokemon. And we're, gonna, we're not gonna have a discussion on yeah, that. Just okay, kidding. yeah, no, Mantine is actually great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there okay, you John, go. Felt bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, I don't even know how I ended up joining his league. And was it? Uh, no. Yeah, he was using Skype when I was using Discord for at least like six months to a year. So he was still a boomer in that regard about using Skype <laughs> for NCP season two. NCP is his, uh, yeah. His yeah. John's Pokemon League. So I was in it for season two. And yeah, I did the draft. And it was my pick around, I think I was in the middle of the draft order, like pick seven or eight. And I went to a tier two and picked up Shaman Sky. Shaman Sky was in tier two? Yeah. What? John. Okay. We're, okay. He's probably in a call later. We're in a joint. We're in a roasting for this one. I can't. I like paused for a second. I was like, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be right. Oh, uh, John. Yeah, and I got a I got a super super busted team. Uh, he allowed. There's the option that you could pick two megas, or you could pick a mega and another Pokemon. So I just only picked one mega, 
I don't think it, it made sense to pick two megas because you could only use one in the game. At the time, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I got a busted team. I don't know if I ever told John this, but in like I build teams in five minutes for this league. And <laughs> I pick Shaman Sky and then put the other, like the rest of my team. Oh, let me pull. Okay, here it is. Side so Clefable, Thunderous, Rhyperior, Lapras. Okay, they're they're bad. Mega Sizzler, Hydreigon, Zygarde 50, Infernape, Scolipede, or Uniclus. That was my okay. team. So okay. pretty good. Um, so yeah, I put so I always had Shaman's guy on my team. I put the other ten or nine mons into a random generator and like whatever <laughs> stuff. Was what I was That's awesome. And just build a team according to that. That's, pretty amazing. Hilarious. That's awesome. That's good, though. That brings the light to like the game. It, it allows you to have fun with it instead of stressing too much about it. Because we had this conversation with Dr. Um, Dr. Slacking. Slacking. Yeah. And uh, once you put that stress over on yourself, and it just doesn't make it fun anymore. So whenever yeah. you can do little things like that to make it more entertaining for you to play in the first place, it just keeps things fresh for and you. And it like, teaches you more, I feel like, in that way, too. Because you're like, okay, well, this is what I got to work yeah, with. Yeah, this is I what I got. I gotta, yeah, exactly. Well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, shit. Now, yeah. now I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then Leo here, he asked you a question. Oh, he's got a barrage of questions because I know you guys are super close. Um, oh, this no. is Leo oh, at six yeah, foot but, uh, but John, John and I are tight, so yeah. Nice. Uh, hopefully one day we'll I'll be good enough to play Valorant with him, but we'll see. Oh no! Oh my God! No! Oh you don't God! Want to, please. Wait, why not? <laughs> John is John is uh so we obviously in the, in the goon server right so he he plays Valorant all the time and he yeah. loves to talk to so the reason why we call him John he calls himself John but John I is actually really, the third person yeah, I never really know why he's that that's the third person so there's John Jr. there's yeah. Johnny that's the JJ there's you know there's John and then there's John and, and John and John is the, the the third person John Jr. that says that John Jr. is so good at game. Oh, John, I'm so good at game. And so, like, he becomes this completely different person that he speaks to, like, in the third person. So that's John. <laughs> and John comes out a lot while he plays Valorant. Yes. And he, like, pumps himself up. He goes, um, oh, or my God, Overwatch. you're dead. I'm so good at game or, or Overwatch. Overwatch. Yep. Yeah. That's where John comes out. Where he, yeah. Now, all of a sudden, John Jr. is gone and John takes over. <laughs> so right, there you go, John. That, 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 that's your third person for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Leo at Six Foot Hacks, he asks you, um, why do you have... Oh, God, here we go. Oh, Leo. He says, why do you have bad... Ep- <laughs> his, his, his question could be garbage. Yeah. <laughs> he says, why do you have bad opinions thinking Galarapidash oh, is bad and Manaphy is good? So we'll start oh. with that one. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you don't understand how bad Leo is. <laughs> I don't know. How, it seems he just gets he just gets away with it. Like every game, <laughs> like I don't know how he wins. Like I, those games he just wins, and he shouldn't because he's so bad. And it, 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 it just it just is unbelievable how bad. He is. <laughs> like, he, yeah, you don't see what what me and Harris have to put up with. Uh, he's the absolute worst. <laughs> Oh my gosh! But, Knowing Leo, that's just hilarious. That's funny. But uh, no, no, he's he's okay. But but we were we teamed up for uh for TBL, uh, uh-huh. one of the one of the draft leagues I did for Generation Eight, and he he was my uh my partner in crime. Uh, and he wanted to get Rapid Ash, and I did not want to get Galarian Rapid Ash. It's like when when are we ever gonna bring Galarian Rapid Ash? I think we brought it to one game out of like seven or eight so i guess to be fair bring oh actually we brought it because i suggested it so no (laughs) but no it's 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 just not good rapid ash isn't good (laughs) galarian rapid ash is not good i don't know why he thinks it's good he also thought (laughs) he thought the evil was good so it it just shows oh yeah that's that was the whole thing yeah that was before i got its ability uh stakeout which doesn't really make it much better, but yeah. make it a little bit better. Oh, <laughs> well, Leo, he's probably cringing at this right now. He's about to throw something at you. <laughs> oh, no, um, I, I already know he is. <laughs> and and then the Manaphy is so good. Yeah, I love Manaphy. Yes. People overrated it at the beginning of Generation 7 uh, because of Z moves were, were introduced. And yeah. a popular move on the showdown, or uh, Smogon Ladder as well, was a. Uh, Z rain danced, so uh, that gave you plus one speed 
uh, in addition to uh, boosting your water attacks. And then you could go for a tail glow and then be at plus three special attack and plus one speed. And then you were killing a lot of things in theory. It was just pretty hard to set up, but I still liked Manaphy. Anyway, even though people like people like hate, liked to hate it so much that I felt like it was underrated by the end of Generation 7. It was. Sense. I'll agree with you that way. There, I'll, I'll, I'll side with you in the Manaphy versus Galarian Rapidash debate, so I'll, I'll throw that on there so that way Leo can combust even more. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the second part that Leo puts on here is this, this is a good personal one. I love this. He says, why do you never have faith in me even though I've proven you should? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, see, I, I literally I thought you, something I, was wrong. I thought something was messed up. <laughs> the oh, no, I, I, thought, I thought you said something wrong in that question. I was just making sure you're clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> you saying why I should have faith in him or why, why I shouldn't you, have faith? Why do you oh, never why do you have, never have faith, faith in, in me? me? Even though I've proven you should. When has he proven it? <sighs> when has he proven it? <laughs> He's proven it when I, when I carried our team in one TBL. So, I mean, I guess he was there along for the ride. So I guess, I guess he, he, <laughs> he, was there, he was there for moral support. <laughs> I guess we'll give him credit that he didn't screw me up. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You guys came up with, you guys are a force in that league. That was incredible to watch. No, that was, that was a lot of fun with Drag. I mean, Dragapult's broken again, so. And Gengar. That was a, that was a cool combo that that the I double suggested. Ghost attack. Mm -hmm. yeah, actually, it might have been Leo that suggested it. Uh, no, we'll say <laughs> <it. laughs> uh, We'll keep that under wraps just to keep them yeah, 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 in yeah, check. Don't, yeah, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third part he has here, uh, he says, okay, so this is going to be elaborating a little bit more about what we talked about with Shuckle. He asks you, why is Shuckle so bad, but you are. <laughs> so, he you says, are why king. is Shuckle so bad, but you are the king of them? Question mark. Oh, well, it was easy to become the king because they're so bad. <laughs> I, can't, I can't become king of like Arcanine. I would like, I get killed by it, the big fire dog. <laughs> no, there's like this only, a... there's like not many months I could like, I could take on a fight, like 1v1. I feel like I could take stuff on a fight. Even if like the defense stat is very high, I could like yeah. cook it up. I'm a pretty decent cook, so. <laughs> I have to cook up shuckle and make some shuckle I can't stew. Cook it up. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle Sue, that's amazing. All right, this next question that I have here is from Matt OG Albina. This is a good one. He is your oh, co-host no. on the no. WBE ranking, so this will be nice and feisty. <laughs> At OG Albina, he asks you, um, how large is your That's a Plus One Shrine? Oh, it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so knows. tell us about the Plus One Shrine. Oh, uh, well... No, there's a well. There's a bunch of coaches in the WWE singles that haven't played previously. So like that's why. I, well, so OG and I are doing uh, weekly power rankings. So mm -hmm. the next couple of days, the next one will. Well, I guess this will be going up Wednesday. So I guess it probably already came up uh, on OG Albina's channel for a week two power rankings. So definitely mm -hmm. go check out his channel for that. Um, but in addition to doing that, I'm also doing coaching interviews. For W singles coaches, and I wanted to get to interview coaches that I didn't really know that <laughs> well, or maybe like the viewers wouldn't know that well, and just try to get like their motivations as to why they wanted to like venture into this format. Um, so I, I reached out to that to plus one because I did not like his team at all. So <laughs> I wanted to interview him for our team he had, and I think I ranked him 15 in the power rankings, and uh, OG ranked him 16. So out of 16 coaches. So Oof. we both didn't really like his team. Uh, but I saw, I watched a little bit of his videos and his streams and he's a very entertaining guy. Uh, so he was definitely more than welcome to, uh, to join as the first host on <laughs> the, uh, the interview. And yeah, he, he just went all out on the interview and like, he spoiled like plans that he was going to make. He spoiled that he's going to do live team builders on stream, which still seems like a crazy concept for me, but he's, he's won in the WB. So I guess I, I, you can't fault him for it. And yep. he won his week one and he won yep. pretty well. I was like, well, yep. I gotta, someone's got to get on the hype train. So it was definitely yeah. me. <laughs> toot, <And> like, <laughs> toot toot. Let's get going. <laughs> OG was not that impressed with his week one win, but 
I definitely gave him the benefit of the doubt. Eddie also came on to my show for the interview. And we had, we had a really nice chat about uh, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Creator 1 and 2 remastered coming out next month. And I'm super excited for it. Hey, so there it is. So that's a plus one. He's a, <laughs> make sure you check him out. He's in the WB. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, an amazing guy. So very cool deal there. The um, next question that I have here, this is actually not much of a, well, it's a question, obviously, but it's more of a poke at, at mid Poke Master, he asks you, why, does uh, you, no. why do you bully him? Why does he bully me? <laughs> why do I bully him? Ah, oh, man. I didn't know who he was for the longest time. Um, well, I mean, not for the longest time, but I know for, so there's a, have you heard of DPL or do you know? Like, I do. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. So if, if you guys aren't aware, uh, it's. It's called a draft Premier League, and it kind of uh, emulate. Oh, it does emulate the uh, Smogon Premier League, uh-huh. um, and that's like the most prestigious team and tournament on the Smogon website. Um, so they tried to emulate that. Well, they are emulating it, and they do a pretty good job with all the leadership team there um, for the draft league community. So um, you have a team of like seven to ten people. Um, playing in generation six, seven and eight draft league formats. Um, and then eventually there's one team that wins the championship. So, uh, I was actually a, a cap, a co-captain, uh, this past season and season one of it. Uh, and my team made playoffs, which was top four out of 10. So it was pretty competitive to get a playoff spot. Uh, we didn't end up advancing past semifinals, but we still did a pretty good job. And, I know mid wanted to come into the, like our team server just to like get experience and like maybe provide some mocks and help people out. And I was like, I don't know who you are. I don't want you to come. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no. I was like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yes. yes. And then, uh, sticks, uh, part of the token minorities. Who's, a uh, so the token minorities is a YouTube channel. Um, mm. and one of the people that's like that runs his YouTube channel, Jolt, was my uh, co-captain. Uh, and Styx is good friends with Jolt. And Styx reached out to me. He's like, oh, you should give him a chance. I was like, oh, well, Styx says I'll give him a chance. And I guess I will. So that's, <laughs> that, was, that was my first experience with, with mid. I was like, uh, because uh, Styx like, advocated enough for you. I guess I'll let you out. That's and amazing. That's it was actually a very good help throughout the process. There were some, there were a couple people that we allowed that weren't, that weren't like unofficial members that were like not helpful at all. But Mid was actually pretty helpful with some games, so it was definitely a benefit there. But no, yeah, he's a uh, he's a stud when it comes to basically pulling his weight on yeah. most leagues because homeboys out there just yanking 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 exactly. things through. He's got to uh, he's got to find like a footing and find a way to like get yourself out there and like advertise yourself. And that was hard doing like that draft premiere stuff. Like there were like, there were probably we went over about a little under 300 applications and a majority of those people, I didn't know who they were. And it's like, I want to give everyone a fair chance. But at the same time, if I don't know who you are, it's tough for me to draft you. So like in terms of like picking you for my team. So it was definitely a, a tough balance there. But like yeah. everyone a fair chance. And I and we tried to. And we gave like a couple like standout people a shot that I don't think anybody else would have otherwise. Nice. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's honestly like my whole purpose at this point in the draft league community. Like I've shown that I can win leagues out there. Like so in like that regards I can only go like downhill from here. But I want to <laughs> I want to provide like unique content out there and try to help people get more acclimated into the format. So that's why we're that's doing awesome. the power rankings and like doing explanations about teams. And that's why I'm doing these coaching interviews to like get these coaches perspectives and experiences about why they're doing the format to hopefully get people interested. Yeah. That's awesome, that's man. That's, that's cool. really cool. And uh, so there's a couple, we're going to, we're going to rapid strike these three fun questions and then we're going to hit them with a really heavy one. That's okay. going to be one that's going to going to kind of emulate with a lot of people that I'm sure there's going to be a few people that are listening to this podcast for this question. So shout out to Slick Panther for that one. <laughs> it's one of his three. So Slick, we're going to get you one of the three. <laughs> but the first fun question that we're going to hyper through is um, by Matthew, a.k.a. Dr. Slacking at oh, yes. Dr. Slacking. He asks you, 
If I pay you in cereals, will you let me sweep you with Terrakion so I feel better about my EWT season? Be a pal. Be a pal. Tell us about what happened. Be a pal. <laughs> I'm not a... I don't eat a whole lot of cereal for breakfast. I've been, I've been, <laughs> I've been making pancakes lately. Like homemade, like I've made like a homemade uh, pancake recipe. I've been trying to get gluten-free flour actually, because my, uh, my, my father's gluten-free. So, like, huh. and they've been actually turning out pretty well. So I'm happy with that. I like to cook. Uh, so, hmm, how many? Yeah, if you give me like five pounds of cereal, that would probably <laughs> Yeah, enough like like it, it really like in terms of like like games and such i don't like i want to win but like if you give me like five bucks i'll throw a game i don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does winning mean in the in the whole scheme of things it doesn't mean anything but if you gave me five bucks i could i could buy a then you're one. five bucks richer all right man so exactly. with that being said you are i'm an admin for the ep academy so let's get you back in there and then i'll put you on my schedule <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that dub for week one, and I'll start one and <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, That's Dr. Funny. Slacking. We love him. He's an amazing guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The next fun question that I have here is from uh, Proxy Froxy at Frox. Oh, uh, she, yes. she put the They put the backwards, so it's Proxy Froxy, then Froxy Proxy. So let's say that five <laughs> times fast. Um, here we go. Here this it is. is. The, this is the, the time. Question. Uh, is- yeah, they ask you, um, what's your favorite bridge, and why do you ask people what their favorite bridge is? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'll say my favorite, like, large bridge. So, like, a bridge everyone, or not everyone, but like, I assume like a big percentage of people would know, would be the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Um, do you know of that? No. I don't think so. I don't. Okay. So it connects uh, Maryland and Virginia, and it's oh, about dope. 16 to 20 miles, and it's partially underwater, partially above water. And like, you know what? I've actually I've seen okay, pictures. I've seen that. I've seen people going through that bridge. That's insane and scary. <laughs> oh, it's definitely scary. And I, uh, I have a I have a friend of mine. It's like constructing the bay tunnel part two like a second lane essentially yeah. so it's like i have a little bit of investment in like his success about doing that so big bridge would be the chesapeake bay bridge tunnel but in terms of like smaller localist bridges it would be the uh it's called a middle thoroughfare bridge so it's a really crappy bridge that connects like in my hometown it cape may and wildwood crest um, to like other like the richer areas um, oh, okay but it's like a super crappy bridge that probably needs to be um, torn down <laughs> oh, no. uh, it would be a, that would be a pain I don't yeah that would be a pain if like you had one less bridge to get into wildwood it would be insane because it's already um. insane to get into wildwood in the summer anyway like yeah so Cape May has a population of about uh, like the the area, like maybe five to six thousand, live there full time. Okay, like in the yeah. summer, the population there gets to like a couple hundred thousand. It can get up to at one time. So it's like oh, a geez. huge increase in population, like oh, for like three insane. four months out of the year. So like it's like super crazy. And like if you like if you had to tear down one of the three bridges, it'd be terrible. But like the bridge is so bad. Um, and three years ago, so there's a, there's about a 20 yard area where like, it'll like, it's like a bridge, but it'll fold upward to allow like tall sailboats or such to go through. It's like 20 yards. So it's not that large of an area and like, like a cruise ship wouldn't be able to get through it, but smaller boats could fishing boats. Um, but there is someone that was driving and the bridge was rising like accidentally and like the, the the lever to like say all right don't drive on the bridge now didn't go down so this person was driving and they realized that the bridge was opening up upward so like they were going up on an angle like close to like a 90 degree yeah. angle towards the bridge and they gunned it the people that oh, were driving they gunned it they gunned it <laughs> and what? just made it through because I mean, it's like 20 yards, so like, it's either you're gonna 
like if you like you can't break because it's gonna go to like a 90 degree angle so you can't break on a 90 degree angle so you're gonna fall backwards onto the bridge 20 yards that's gonna probably there's a probably a pretty good chance it kills you because uh, that's a pretty far drop but no they gunned it across the bridge and it was people like video recording of it and they said it it was about a six or seven foot drop that they took like they did a what's it like the dukes of hazard like driving <laughs> over oh my God. and like made it across and like they had minor injuries and like the car was like kind of busted up but they made it across like fine like the people in the car were were pretty healthy that's so, like, wild it was just oh, insane yeah. that that happened that's on this so bridge weird. at home and like God. i don't i try not to use it that often I'll, I'll take Jack for like three, four miles or to drive around it just to make sure I don't have safe, to. Be, yeah. have to be good. <laughs> I would do the same thing. Oh my god! There you go. That's so there's crazy. the there's the epic story behind the questions. That's amazing. That's a, I feel oh. like no one's gonna be able to compare no, to that no, now. He he was just explaining his favorite. Like, what do you ask? What do so? Why do yeah, you ask? Why people? do I ask it? Well, yeah. it gives a little bit of like a personality, like like we all we all live in different parts of the world. Uh huh. Uh, yeah or whatever and like what's your favorite bridge well it, it's kind of weird maybe you don't live near a bridge or maybe it's like a small bridge over a lake uh or yeah if you don't live over a bridge like tell me <laughs> you don't live near a bridge like oh that's weird because i like i've grown up living near the water all the time it's so, like that would be just a foreign concept that you don't drive over bridges i drive over bridges multiple times a day to get to work um, we are the worst san diegans ever because we <laughs> missed our bridge our most popular bridge that's in all the postcards. Oh, Coronado? We've- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, you haven't gone on it? Okay. No, we have. It's we, just, have we just didn't think of it. We didn't think of it. It's bringing Corn- the Coronado Bridge. It's in the okay, yeah, postcards know, but- for San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> we're the freaking worst. Like, we're, we love bridge. Coronado, too. We just, it's so normal to us that we're just like, oh, yeah, just take the Coronado Bridge. But we don't think it's, we're so sorry. Oh, so exactly, stupid. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, sure, there's just a bunch of, like, big bridges I take to work every day. It's like, oh, it's whatever, but, <laughs> yeah. but it's whatever to you, but it's, like, like that'd be amazing to go over to Coronado every day, or, like, yeah. like to see it, and, like, that's not a perspective I get. So that's, yeah. that's why I asked for, like, a random bridge, because bridges are unique. Like, you can't have the same bridge anywhere else yeah. in the world. It's only unique uh, to that specific location. You can ask for architecture, very... maybe, but a lot of places, architecture is the same. Um, but, yeah, no, bridge is, like, and I love architecture. I guess being an engineer does that to you. So, like, that's why I ask. It's, it's something unique. Conversation starter. Ladies, hit me up. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, that's that. Okay, so now everything makes sense to us now. So now we're we're uh, it, it's all come to fruition. The question is amazing. I never really thought about it in that perspective. So perfect. Now we're- I'm like, I just, ha- I literally just had the epiphany. I was like, <laughs> I, cause this question was asked for us on Shay's podcast mm-hmm. and we're like, I don't know the freaking golden, the golden gate, gate bridge. bridge. And then I didn't even think about our own freaking bridge. That's so, like on the postcards. <laughs> like that's so stupid. <laughs> I well, golden gate is beautiful too. I remember it is I beautiful. ran a couple of times, but I definitely like the Coronado more. Yeah, yes. I do too, actually. Gosh, darn it. So our, our last fun question <laughs> so that we have here before we hit the uh, the heavy hitter is, uh, this is from at Olivia Claire, at Olivia Sama. She asks you, what are your thoughts on Beyblade? <laughs> Beyblade. Uh, I, I maybe like played with the toy for five minutes of my life. <laughs> yeah, no interaction with it whatsoever or there was a tv yeah there was a cartoon of it too i i, I think i might have watched one episode of the cartoon but yeah no no affiliation unfortunately wish i can give you a so neutral sorry sorry, sorry Liv. Liv. <laughs> <laughs> um so here's the heavy hitter here's the here's the question that i'm sure a lot of people are going to want to know especially coming from you with your given history and the draft league format, and then the decorated, uh, the decorated aspect that you have now that you've won your multiple championships, at Slick Panther at Panther Slick, he's gonna ask you one of his three questions. He says, "What's your advice 
from getting better in draft format when it comes to prep and play. And he gave an example, like as if when you can make a double, when is it smart to make a double? Um, what's your advice that you would give a new draft league player that wants to play in the format? It's a big question. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like most of the time I win or lose because I drafted a good team or I didn't draft a good team. Uh, so like, you could say all the, the, the accolades I have a draft, I actually like just missed out on playoffs on a league that on a showdown league I was doing like yesterday. <laughs> so don't always have the greatest success. I think that was my second time I didn't make playoffs in a league, uh, super competitive league uh, that I'm in. So I was one differential point away uh, from getting in, but it definitely happens. Uh, but for actually, it, it's it's the league is called UDL, which mm -hmm. I doubt you would know of, but it's a unique format that we did this year where we had a generation seven, generation six, and generation eight draft. Um, so we played three weeks of generation six, three weeks of seven, and three weeks of eight. And my team for six and seven were very good, and I knew they were like among like the top three best teams that were drafted. And I went five and one between ORS and Sun and Moon. Like I did very well. Uh, but for my sword and shield, I knew my team is bad and I went 0 and 3. <laughs> so I went 5 and 4 overall, which is which is pretty okay. But like I knew just on the the basis of I didn't like my team as much as the other two leagues and I knew I knew I wasn't going to do well. So honestly, a lot of it comes with drafting a team and there's a I mean there's a lot of things you can look for for drafting a team and it's probably too much honestly to even talk about now but uh for prepping like for an individual game making doubles how to prep again like prep is 75 80 percent of the battle if you have a better prep Definitely. you're probably going to win the game um in terms of doubles so how i build a team uh I look at all the mons I have, all the mons my opponents have, and I generally look at what I think are the three Pokemon that have the best matchup in a game, mm -hmm. and I'll be on the team. Basically, no matter what, it's very rare that I'll remove one of those three Pokemon, and I'll base the team around those three. Um, and with the end goal of my final build, I look at all the Pokemon on my opponent's team, and I want to have at least an equal amount to uh, ways that it could beat me as the ways that I could beat that specific Pokemon. So like if I'm facing a Kiram and it had like it could Kiro could reliably like take on two Pokemon on my team 1v1, I want to make sure I have at least two Pokemon or more that can combat the Kira in retaliation. So I'm always having the upper hand. Like I've ideally on my team if I have three Pokemon that take on Kiram, like one mm -hmm. that's like neutral and two that are taken advantage by it, then that's a positive for me. That's like, I have more ways to deal with the Kiram than the Kiram has ways to deal with me. So that's that how sense. I build teams and I want to make sure for every Pokemon, even if it's a something that you would think it's irrelevant or something isn't going to come, it's easier to prepare for those mons. Or if it's a mon that's like, like a Kiram Black or something that's very, very tough to handle, I'll find ways and be creative to make sure that it's at least a neutral matchup. Like there's an equal amount of ways that it could take advantage of me in terms of ways that I could take advantage of it. Um, and that's what I do when I'm in a battle. So like if I'm facing a Kiram and like, I know I only have two responses to it and I have a different Pokemon out in the field. I know why I need to save one, at least one or two answers for the Kiram. So I'm not going to risk something that I know I need in the future to take on a Kiram later on in the battle. Uh, it's kind of vague in that regard, but I'll make doubles knowing, like, I won't make doubles knowing that if it doesn't work out, that I'm in a bad position. I'm all, I would only make doubles knowing that even if I make the double incorrectly, that it's not going to really affect the long-term goal of my team and I still will have responses to everything on my opponent's team yeah so that makes sense 
That makes Very sense. Very long did it, kind of vague, but that's generally the thought process I have with building teams. Yeah, the base way that you can take a, the one thing you can take away from that is just basically understanding how your game plan is for a draft and making sure that it's the most optimal for, for you, right? That way when you have the options to bring different Pokemon to a matchup, it's basically your that step ahead because you have, like you said, quote unquote, a good team versus a quote unquote bad team. It allows you that more opportunity to prep for your opponent. And so that's basically the start of the key for the, the, the uh, building process in which, like you said, that could win or lose you a game. So in the way that's vague, but it's also really telling you a lot that, um, that it takes a lot to to draft a good team. And that puts you one step ahead of your opponent. Yeah. And honestly, I've had quite a I don't, I don't re- like I plan at some point and maybe when I'm like I was in a little bit of a lull in terms of leagues but I think I'm going to be getting in two more in the next week which uh, there's too many people that want me to do stuff and I don't want to turn people down <laughs> <laughs> see that's how it starts man you just want to do one or two and then it just steamrolls from there you're like what is happening <laughs> a long term I want to like go back and like record all of my stats of like all the draft leagues that I've done and just see the progress and how well I've done like nice. actually that'd be cool that'd be fire to see yeah I know Ultra Player did it I don't mm-hmm. know if he's kept it up to date but he's done a pretty good job with that so I would like to thank you, man, for joining us here in the Grandmaster's Table. Thank you guys, everyone, for answering the, for sending us questions for Shackle King to give us a little bit more in depth on who he is and his thought process. I really do appreciate you guys. And um, the floor is yours, man. Do you have anything coming up, anything to plug for the people that you have any projects coming to the works pretty soon? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we are going to, me and uh, OG are going to continue doing power rankings uh, every other week on our channels and as well as uh, weekly coaching interviews. Uh, for week three, it probably will be a uh, magnitude uh aka oh. steve so we'll see there uh I'm, I'm really good friends with him so that's a pretty easy interview to do so uh go check that out i'll probably be uploading the udl season as a whole the one i didn't make playoffs on and explain the thought process about why some of my teams are good and some of my teams are bad so hopefully you guys can learn from that yeah, that'd be a good educational piece. That'll be good. So keep your eyes out for that. Magnitude is a good friend of the podcast, and he is a colorful yeah. human being. We love him <laughs> to death. He uh, always has something fun to community to say, so I know that that, that uh, interview is going to be amazing. So guys, do us a massive favor. Down in the description below, we'll leave a link to Shackle King's YouTube channel. Please head over there and subscribe to him if you're not already. I'll also leave a link to his Twitter so that way you guys can follow him there. Keep up with all of his stuff and make sure that you guys don't miss out on any draft league content that he puts out because it's a good tool for you to learn from and to uh, get yourself developed up into anything on draft league and even competitive Pokemon in general because like I said, you need to get a start in a Smogon single. So you can get a little bit of just the both. So make sure you guys go ahead and do that. And um, I thank you, man, for joining the po- joining the podcast today. Summer is actually not here because the kids woke up, so she's performing her motherly Aww. duties. She's off doing with the with the kids, so I'm sure she'll want to say thank you. But I appreciate you for for joining us this late because I know for you, it's it's pretty late at the night right now. Uh, it's only one in the morning. It's it's not. That <laughs> it's like yeah, Leo and I are consistently at talks until two or three in the morning. It's bad, but working from home with COVID, you know, it makes it manageable. Yeah, it makes it, it keeps you sane to have that person to talk to. That's cool. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate you, man, for giving us this time. And uh, guys, if you guys enjoyed this, again, make sure you leave a like on this video. And um, th- with all that being said, we're going to get the heck up out of here. Have a great rest of your night. And above all else, be nice. Peace. Later.